Welcome to tonight's edition of Hopcat Presents Local Spins Live at River City Studios. I'm John Sinkovich with localspins.com website, and we're thrilled to have a truly outstanding rock duo with us tonight with uh, Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish. This is the 15th edition of Local Spins Live at River City Studios, so welcome all of you to this wonderful intimate session at River City, and thank you to the video team uh, led by Brennan Helt, and of course to Roy Wallace and his team here at River City. Uh, please welcome Welcome, Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish. We've got Jesse Ray on guitar. We've got Brandon Hop, otherwise known as Dingo, on drums. Uh, I have to start by asking you, Jesse, a question about your performances because anyone who's ever seen you live knows that you are full of energy on stage. From the very first time I saw you, way back when at Grand Rapids Brewing, you were standing on tables. You've been lying on the, your back playing your guitar. You're jumping off of amps and uh, uh, drums. What spurs you to uh, sort of motivates you to perform in, in this way? I don't know. I was never allowed to jump on the bed when I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, I, guess, I guess it's just a way of getting back at my mom. <laughs> I bet are there artists who sort of inspired you in that way? I'm just curious. as to, or, or is it the, the moment that gets to you when you're playing? I think it's a lot of the moment. I think that uh, when I was a kid, I was always inspired by The Who. How they trash all their gear. Uh, there's something about Pete Townsend, how he go to the same music store, run in, grab a guitar, and say, Hey, Frank, pay you next week, eh? <laughs> run right out. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I just love that rowdy, rowdy energy. And you started as a solo act. Um, and I know that you, you picked up your guitar and started playing on street corners and that kind of thing. Tell people a little bit about the history of Jesse Ray and how you picked up a guitar and why and, and, and what your journey has been as a musician before you started this band. Well, I've always wanted to be a singer-songwriter and play music. I've always wanted to do that. I've been singing since I came out of the womb. Um, personally, my story begins here in GR when my mom, she worked at the YMCA. She had to stay up to get me into the bar to play an open mic because I was 18. And then she'd go to work at 4 a.m. and open the YMCA. So I actually owe a lot to her. And then I went to school out in Portland, Oregon. And I played on street corners a lot, all the time. I never got a job because I could just make tips on street corners. And I'd say that that's really kind of where it begins. What, what kind of music were you playing when you were playing mm, on a street corner? I started off playing a lot of indie folk, which is particular to the Grand Rapids area. Um, and then I, I just got into rockabilly and blues and rock and roll and I, I just never looked away. It was, I knew that right away that was what I wanted to really do. So when you first formed Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish, you had a different drummer, Josh Worsham, I know. And, and how did you and Dingo meet and, and what, what, what's, what's the chemistry for you guys on stage and how this all came about? Uh, well, we met actually, uh, during the Don't Call, Don't Write video and after the previous drummer dropped out. Um, we had a lot of footage that was just unreleased, unused, like uh, we didn't know what to do with it. So we went back, I went back, and I made a pass at Dingo, and I said, if you weren't going to school next term, I'd ask you to play in my band. And then sure as shit, he <laughs> gets back to me in a week, and he says, hey, so I'm actually not going to school next term? I would love to audition for your band. And he was the first audition. I had a lot of people hit me up looking to audition, and he was the first and only person that I auditioned. So in your view, Dingo, why did you decide to do this? And, and what, what makes Jesse Ray such a special guy to play with? Oh, geez. When I, well, I mean, I started off. Do I talk in this yeah. one? All right. So, <laughs> so I started off as just a fan. You know, my, uh, my roommate was the videographer that... Uh, um, was filming him, and um, he's like, hey, this Jesse Ray guy, you know, he's, he's pretty cool, you know, he's going to go places. And then um, I, I was just kind of over school. I was doing it for about six years at the time, and I'm just like, yeah, might as well try something different, and rock and roll kind of took me. So was it, but what, what's your training as a drummer? Was it in the rockabilly vein, in the blues vein, or is it something different? I was, uh, I was in a, a sludge doom metal band for two years, <laughs> and then um, a cover band, a really good cover band for about three years. And uh, I played for my church for a number of years. I've been playing for about 13 years now. So a um, lot of all over the place, and rockabilly was the only one that they're like, yeah, play, play faster and play louder. You know, so like, it kind of worked out. 
Well, you know, Jesse Ray, obviously there's a lot of comparisons that will be made to early Elvis Presley. I mean, everything from the, the style of music that you sort of started with and you've expanded beyond that and more of the blues and the rock realm and a lot of other things. Um, but obviously early Elvis did have an impact on you from the look to, to just the sort of the vibe and, and the fact that he was quite the rebel when he started. How do, how do you view what, what his impact has been on your music? I'd say that he probably, he, Carl Perkins, and Johnny Cash had the biggest influence. Elvis definitely was the performer out of those three. Um, I don't know, man. It's just like the slick back hair, the the greasy look. Like he always, he always got chicks. Like he was just, he was so, <laughs> he was so cool. And he, was, he had the talent to back it up. He wasn't just some jerk, like with tall hair. He actually was extremely talented. And that's what I always wanted to strive to be. I wanted to be like, I've always wanted to be the best player that I could be. All right. Well, let's hear a little bit of Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish. We'll have you play a few songs. Uh, what are you going to kick things off with? We're going to play Lonesome. so much.
change me Go ahead and flash your tension Never distract to rearrange so much. You guys ever had terrible friends before? Yeah, all right. You can speak up, like, there's only like six of you here. Yeah, he said right next to me. <laughs> so this next song is about getting over that. This next song is called Two Face Talking. Talking, don't you know, don't matter. 
My hair look okay? <laughs> We can say the F word, right? Yeah. Can we do that? It's a podcast. Fucking A. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. This next song is about being on the road. It's called Gasoline. Thanks so much. So that's always been, I mean, from the last year or so, one of my favorite songs that you guys do. And um, part of it is because it's a little swampy. It's got a little bit of that Delta bluesy thing going. So from your perspective, is that a song you could have written five years ago? or oh, no. it, Because it seems to me your music has progressed a lot over the last few years. Yeah, it's gone, it's gone uh, from like that kind of cutesy sort of like rockabilly ripoff kind of sound to more of like a like a influenced by like delta blues with a swing beat sort of thing i'm really liking it i'm experiencing a lot more freedom with my word choice obviously uh which is really nice i'm sorry i'm so out of breath right now <laughs> that's good <laughs> So do you see yourself, so what do you see yourself doing in a few years? What's going to happen with Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish? What in your mind's eye when you look at, at the future, what do you see? I have no idea. Honestly, I'm just focusing, we're just focusing on working hard, making sure that we put on the best performance possible every single time, and trying our best to connect with any sort of fan base that we may have currently or any fan base that is looking for a style of music that we play. 
I mean, you 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 play a lot around the Grand Rapids area. Do you see yourself touring well beyond that? And 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 what would you hope to do? Because I would see that uh, you guys could find yourselves on bills for a lot of different people. You opened for Brian Setzer uh, yeah. the other night at uh, at Meyer Gardens, which is, must have been pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself doing more of that down the road? Well, we're trying. <laughs> we're looking at it. We're uh, looking to find the right people to help us out. Um, we actually are getting out quite a bit. This weekend, we're going to Kansas City, and then we're actually playing a brewery, Burnham Brewery, in uh, in Indianapolis. We're really excited about that. So we got we got we get out to Indy. Um, we were out in New York a couple weeks ago, and that was a lot of fun. And what's just, been the reaction to new audiences? I'm, audiences around here now are becoming familiar with what you're doing and, and, your, and your, the energy you put into your shows. But what have you been finding with people maybe seeing you for the first time? We're actually experiencing that they think it's all right. They don't think that we <laughs> suck, which is really nice. <laughs> I mean, like, pretty not bad, you know? <laughs> Is that all, that's a, that pretty not bad, I guess, isn't a bad way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, I want to open this up a little bit to the audience to see if there's anything out there that anybody wants to ask these guys. Uh, you guys have watched them play here t- this evening, so uh, what's your impression of their music? And uh, and ask what, what do you want to ask these guys, somebody in the audience? Yeah, I've always wondered, where did you get the Carolina catfish from? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, it's about a three-minute fishing story. You guys want to hear it? You want to say yeah. that? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> so I was in North Carol- South Carolina because that's where we uh, vacationed for a couple summers. I was about 12 years old, just, ha- just got my first guitar, and um, I couldn't play it for the life of me. I had no idea how to play it. So I'm like, screw this, I've never seen a catfish before. It took me about two hours to actually catch anything, but when I did, it was a fight in my life. Put up the biggest fight. I was sweating for probably 30 minutes fighting this catfish. I didn't even know it was a catfish yet. I thought it was a Loch Ness monster for all I knew. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm fighting this fish, and then I finally whip him up, throw him on the ground, and I'm wrestling him. And he says, what the hell are you thinking? And I said, whoa, whoa, I'm just trying to catch a catfish. He said, let me go. I said, no, I'm, I'm going to catch a catfish. I'm going to bring you home, and we're probably going to eat you. He was like, hell no, nope. Nope, I've been swimming through these waters for 130 years. I said, yeah, sure. All right, Mr. Catfish, let's go. And he said, wait, wait, wait. I can teach you how to play the blues. <laughs> and I said, can you? He said, yeah. Give me three days, I'll teach you how to play the blues. So I tied him up on a trot line, and I didn't tell anybody where he was. I didn't even tell anybody that I caught a catfish. For three days, I went down to the river, and I learned how to play the blues. And then on the third day, he said, I think I just taught you everything I know. And I said, all right, Mr. Catfish, that's great. Uh, thank you very much. And he said, how about letting me go? I said, sure, I'll let you right go. I will let you go right now. And then so I put one hand towards the trot line, and then I reach into my back pocket and pull out a frying pan, and I hit him over the damn head so hard that he flops over into the water, pick him up, fry him up. Because I didn't want anybody else to learn from this catfish. <laughs> you and you alone. That's right. What, what else you guys want to know about Jesse Ray? Anybody else have a question for him? Jesse, uh, your hair looks phenomenal. What kind of pomade do you use? I actually use Shiner Gold pomade. Surely is the finest pomade on the market. Great for hot dates, hot nights, rocking out, and sweating hard at what you love. Do you, anybody want to know who sponsors these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Product placement. These are a few of my favorite. All right, guys, let's hear some more music. What are you going to play for us? Uh, well, how are you thinking? Uh, ain't no woman going to change my mind? We can do that song. This next song is called Ain't No Woman Going to Change My Mind. Let's do it, Tango. A one, two, three, a four. Gonna change my mind. Ain't no woman gonna change my mind. From Saginaw on the Dodge City up to North Carolina, with a good dick, pretty. Yeah. Oh, well, there ain't no woman that's gonna change my mind. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions as to what that one's about? What was the little Scotty Moore lick you threw in there? What was that? That little Scotty Moore lick that you had in there? Hmm. Just for fun. Okay. Yeah, we didn't record that live on the record. This next song is actually about my girlfriend. She works at the Anchor Bar, so this one's called Anchor Bar Tender. And now everybody down in the Anchor Bar thinks that this song's about them. This song is called Anchor Bartender. But I ain't got nothing, nothing to say to you Ain't got no money, babe I won't till my dying day Look day you make it out to dance But I ain't got money and I got no chance All I want is for you to wear my wedding ring Go give me a D Give me a D Give me one more Like I knew you were 
Oh, baby, you look so good. You know, I, you always do. You know, I think I have a, I think I have one more drink. Oh, baby, why don't, why don't you let me take you home, huh? Honey, you're all I think about. Thank you so much. Alright, you guys are ready to get rowdy? Yeah. Sure. Yes. <laughs> cool. Alright, perfect. This next song is about, well, I mean, I wrote it when I was in college. It's about just being pissed off in general. It's called Angry Homesick Travelers Blues.
ain't got nothing to lose. Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish. Uh, I have to say, uh, what, what's the plan for 2017 and beyond? Are you guys recording a new album, uh, touring beyond Michigan? What's the plan? I mean, we're getting in, we're getting in and out of Michigan currently. Um, I'd honestly just say that we're working on a bunch of new material, and uh, we're not taking a break. We're going to pl- keep playing shows. We're, we've been self-employed for about a month now, which is great <laughs> finally sleeping until two and not feel guilty about it or have to call some man about missing work making music full time yeah it's great i mean it's been treating us really well so far especially um, if you don't mind miller high life <laughs> if you don't mind miller high life you're doing all right <laughs> all right we got time for one more song folks what are you going to play to sort of round things out for the folks here This next song is called Green Eye Girl.
you true I got ten thousand things that I wanna say to you Put my head in, baby, wind my seat I wanna love you, baby, on top and put in the sheet Thank you so very much. Once again, I appreciate all of you guys coming. Thanks to Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish, part of Hapcat Presents Local Spins Live at River City Studios. We also want to give special thanks to engineer and studio owner Roy Wallace and, of course, the video team led by Brennan Halt. Keep on coming back to localspins.com. We'll be posting the video and podcast from today's session online in the next few weeks. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. We also want to let people know that we have released our first ever Hopcat Presents Local Spins Live at River City Studios album, The Sessions of Volume 1 featuring 12 West Michigan bands that have been right here in the studios in front of intimate studio audiences performing, and it's in a marvelous, eclectic bunch of people, and we have a marvelous West Michigan music scene here. So please, thanks again, and remember to support your local musicians. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.